If we look at zoning, what is the difference in between zoning for an infinity versus zoning for a standard system? So that, that's a great question. So with the zoning differences between communicating and non-communicating, uh, there, there's a, a multitude of differences. There's a reason that there is a, a communicating version versus a non-communicating version. Again, with the infinity system, <clears throat> again, the wall control being that hub of information, it needs specific inputs. So it's, it's learning about the space, it's learning about those individual zones, it's learning, you know, if, if, if I have a wall control in the master bedroom and at night I like it to be significantly colder than the rest of the house, it's learning what that temperature is, what time that, you know, what time I'm mm -hmm. expecting it to be cooler like that, how long I'm expecting it to be, what's the weather outside like at, at any given point in time, how do I, how much do I need to work? Mm -hmm. And how do I do that more effectively and more efficiently? Uh, so it's, it's quite a bit different versus again, we talk about the, the on off switch, the light switch, that would be the non communicating version. So it's either on or off and it, it doesn't really, it's not learning about the space. It's reacting to an input from the mm -hmm. user. Yeah. And that makes sense because, um, <laughs> whenever we zone a home, everything has to be infinity. So the zone board, uh, the damper, zone dampers, all of it has to be uh, infinity so it all is able to talk to each other. Right. So, okay. Yeah, and there's, there's lots of different, you know, from the non-communicating perspective, mm -hmm. as far as dampers are concerned, uh, there's, there's power open, spring close, mm -hmm. there's yep. power close, spring open. A bunch of different you don't offers. have the option really to open it a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, if you, if, if, if you want to bleed off a little bit of air into a, a different zone in the home, it's it's either all or nothing with a system like that so and and it does it's not mm -hmm. able to do that so that's that's one of the primary differences mm -hmm. there yeah so on these systems can we run a bypass on them you with an infinity system uh -huh. you shouldn't run a bypass and and because the system is smart enough to know how much is how much each room each zone is needing as far as uh, the output of the system is concerned, it's able to adjust appropriately. It's able to partially open, like, a, like I just mm -hmm. mentioned, to partially open a damper, which sim is kind of similar to a bypass, uh, but without the um, discomfort, if you will, of a bypass. You don't want to recirculate air back into a system that's calibrated appropriately for the whole home. Mm -hmm. Hi, this is Kenneth with Atlas AC, and at any point during this video, if you find it to be helpful, please hit the like button, and that will really help me out with the YouTube algorithms. Okay, so would we have to have um, a dump zone or anything in a house if we wanted to for, for zoning homes or anything like that? So the system monitors that on its own. And okay. we'll, we'll dump into a zone, like, like for example, you may have the master bedroom that you want at 67 degrees, and your living room downstairs, you want it to be at 70 degrees. The living room is approaching 70 and a half degrees, but the upstairs bedroom is at 69 degrees. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so there's a, a significant amount. Uh, it's, it's a smaller zone for that master bedroom. There's a significant amount of call or of load for that room. So it's going to open that damper wide up. But it also recognizes that the living room is still above that set point of where, where you know, the, the design temperature is or where the required temperature is. So it's able to open that damper a little bit, which creates a bit of a, a dump zone, if you will, okay. into that space so that it's, it, it's doing things appropriately so that it's not gotcha. significantly overcooling or allowing for other rooms to uh, get outside of the realm of where they need to be. So, so <laughs> when zoning, do most homeowners, should they be looking at it like a, for a better comfort standpoint where you can better control the temperatures and humidities zone by zone, or they, should they be looking at it more from an energy efficiency play? Yes. The answer is yes. So I mean, really to, to break that open, uh, you know, from a from a zoning perspective, zoning is really designed for, again, like we mentioned, all all homes are built a little bit different. And that goes all the way down to the types of materials that were used to construct mm -hmm. the home. Right. Number one. But number two, also location. Uh, orientation of the home is it is it west you know westerly facing is it you know what's the situation where's the the most infiltration of the sun so you're going to have areas of the home that are the load is a little bit different so mm -hmm. unfortunately we can't just design a, a piece of equipment to cool a box mm -hmm. uh, like a refrigerator where right. everything is really the same temperature you have one set point and, and you're good to go um, obviously that's changing now with new refrigerators mm -hmm. but 
homes are like those newer refrigerators where you've got different areas of the home that you have different requirements for it. And to combat that, again, you want the, the room to be a little bit colder at night when you go to sleep. Well, if, you know, husband and wife are, are in the same room and husband wants to go to bed, wife wants to stay downstairs and watch TV or vice versa, you don't want to freeze out the person that's downstairs just because you want it to be colder upstairs in your bedroom. So mm -hmm. that's one of the, the pieces that zoning can offer. Um, but then, uh, you know, additionally from there, um, rooms over a, a garage, uh, you, you have a, a, a unconditioned space that has, you know, infiltration of heat from multiple sides of, mm. of that room. It's naturally going to be a little bit warmer. Uh, rooms on the second floor, they're closer to the attic where, uh, again, unconditioned space with, as you were mentioning earlier, 140, 150 degree air. It's naturally going to have to combat against those temperatures. So zoning gives us a way to be able to maintain different levels of comfort. And then additionally with that, with that infinity zoning control, maintain efficiency and comfort at the same time. So if we have a homeowner and they're, they're looking for four zones in a house and, uh, you know, obviously the system has to be able to work at 100% working capacity. How, how, what would be the ideal, I guess, uh, load ca capacity for each zone or, or how, how would that be properly set up there? Yeah. So that's, that's a great question. So r really to start, that kind of depends on if we're talking about the non-communicating or the communicating infinity zoning control, obviously with the infinity communicating zone control, the smallest zone, if you will, again, it, it'd be nice if, if each of those zones were, were you know, 25% to make up that full 100%, they were evenly distributed. Unfortunately, it never really works that way. So, you know, it, as far as zoning is concerned with the infinity system, your smallest zone has to be able to maintain whatever the lowest CFM output is of mm -hmm. the blower and the lowest capacity of that outdoor unit. So, you know, if, it, if, if we're saying that we can get down with that variable speed to 20% of mm -hmm. its total capacity, it has to be able to handle whatever the system is operating at from a CFM perspective at 20%. So mm -hmm. it's significantly less than, than some of the other zones. And then additionally from there, the Infinity system is able to monitor as, again, as the system is running, <clears throat> how much capacity is needed for that outdoor unit to supply that one zone and can back the blower down to where you're legitimately, mm -hmm. you know, if it's one zone that's calling, you're legitimately sending the right amount of, of cooling to that specific space and not to the others. And then mm -hmm. as, as other zones come on, it's able to speed the blower up and then speed the outdoor unit up as well to maintain specifically what's needed in each of the different zones of the home. So, so how does it know um, the capacity per zone? Is it is it just looking at static pressure internally, saying okay, this zone can only ha it is you know it's at 0.5 now, we're at ideal uh, capacity, and I'm at 20% here, and that's that's the ideal spot. Or is it something that the contractor has to program uh, on installation? So no, this this is a part of the the original commissioning of the system, as we mm -hmm. were talking about earlier with the the pressurizing of the system. It's it will close off dampers and figure out what the you know what the overall static pressure is in in the totality of the the total static pressure if you will is in the duct work when one zone is open versus mm. you know and it will test each zone in that way and then test every combination of those zones thereafter okay and it learns all of that on its own that's nothing no input from the contractor whatsoever it's doing that on its own yeah that's that's super cool now i do get um questions from customers uh and this is a, a very common question can we use two infinity thermostats on the same system for zoning purposes? From a zoning perspective, it's it's really one main wall control. So it, it, it would essentially be like putting multiple computers on your wall. It's not really cost effective for sure, uh, but you would use one main wall control and then the smart sensors that go along with it that are mm -hmm. communicating data back from a zoning perspective. Yes. So it's still just one main hub, but the the zoning the smart sensors that go in the different rooms which you mm -hmm. can still adjust uh, there's a couple of different versions there's one that are just a, a screen that tells you what the temperature is and the homeowner has the option to adjust those temperatures directly from the homeowner app um, or they have the the version where you can adjust temperature up and down as well mm -hmm. if you found this clip to be interesting make sure you check out the full podcast we also have buyer's guides and other useful information that you can find on our website until next time have a good one